The Liberals again exposed the contradictions in their policies and the contradictions in their press releases. This is what happens when you don't have investigative journalists working in the mainstream media. All right, let's listen to this between Trudeau and Polyev. For eight years, this Prime Minister and NDP Liberal government are not worth the cost. He said that he was taking on all this debt so the Canadians wouldn't have to. Well, now we learn that Canadians are spending more on household debt interest than at any time in Canadian history, more than the American families were during the 2008 financial crisis that almost brought down the global economy. Will the Prime Minister reverse the inflationary high tax policies that have indebted Canadians and driven up their interest rates? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The audacity of this Conservative leader knows no bounds. Right. Just last week, he voted against a national school food program, and now he rises to talk about affordability. Right. Let's be clear, this Conservative leader has no long-term vision for this country with or without glasses. It <laughs> takes more than a couple of bags of McDonald's to feed Canadians. That's why we're going to continue to step up and be there with investments for Canadians while he talks about cuts and austerity and then goes and votes for cuts and austerity. Okay, a couple things there. Uh, Paul Yip says that the household debt is higher than it's been since the 2008 housing crisis, which almost put the world into an economic uh, depression like the 1920s. If we'd had any bad weather at the time, we would have been in a bad way. That was one thing they forget about in the 20s. It wasn't just the poor economic decisions. It was the fact that the Dust Bowl made it so that farming, no grain could be grown where the Dust Bowl went through the Great Plains. Anyway, that's a different video. The household debt that uh, Mr. Polyev refers to means that Canadians are now living on credit cards, right? So they they're, they're, they don't have the income for the food and the rent and the electricity bills and all of those things that the government is driving up through the roof. So they are borrowing and praying that the problem will get fixed before the, the wolves come through the door. And this is exactly the exact thing that we've been, that the, we've been warned about now for two years, three years. And anyone who understands the situation at a, at a glance can see that this was coming. And to that, our prime minister, the leader of our country, the second largest country on the face of the earth, says that he wears glasses. I mean, he body shames the leader of the opposition about wearing glasses. This is his answer to you borrowing money. This is his response to you being eyeballs deep in debt and wondering whether or not you'll be able to send your children on that school camping trip or the school a science fair or whatever happens to be happening because we know that the schools are getting less money so the more money the less money they get the more money you need to be providing to give your child the every day then the loveliest contradiction of the entire thing is these liberals are always screaming that they're pulling canadians out of poverty that there's nothing wrong with the economy that everybody who says so is clearly some sort of uh american far right whatever you want to call it just pick a name and they like to throw it in there depending on the day of the week and who you're talking to now personally i don't hold to that truck i think that people want to be looking after themselves they don't want the government looking after them and they certainly don't want to say to their friends and family that the government gives their child breakfast at school don't you know now this is this is insidious right first of all all right, let's just take it at face value. Let's just say for the sake of argument that it's not an, an insidious attempt to brainwash your children or to train your children into accepting the doll from the government, the handouts, so that when they want something from the child, they can tell them that in your 10-minute city, we're not going to deliver you the bag full of crickets unless you do what we want. That's how, no, that's how socialism loves to control people through the food. It's what they always do. They've done it since Lenin. Stalin brought it to a whole new level and starved half of Yugoslavia to death or excuse me Ukraine to death I mean you can you can google it so 
either on the one hand, they're looking to control you through their socialist and communist ideologies, or let's just say they're not. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they're genuinely worried that children are going to school hungry. I thought you said there was no economic problems. I thought you said that you were lifting children out of poverty. I thought you said that it's not a big deal that we're bringing in people from this country to this country and driving up the cost of a rent and driving up the cost of food. Apparently, the problem is so bad that you want to implement a food program at school for children, not in just hard hit regions, but from one coast to the other coast to the other coast. That the it, schools, the children going to school are so in such restraint, constraints, excuse me, that they're all going hungry. Now, how is that? How is make sense of that for me? Because I don't get it. Because on the one hand, you say everything is fine, and anybody who says anything against you is some sort of, you know, whatever crazy person. But on the other side, we need to make a school lunch program so children all across the country, the second largest country on earth, can get fed. All I'm asking you to do is make sense of that contradiction for me. And I, I'm really, uh, I'm embarrassed that the, the prime minister of our nation stood up and body shamed somebody for glasses. I mean, that's just, that's, that's, I wouldn't let, let a six year old do that. How old is this guy? And he was so proud of himself. They're all clapping. Yay. You have to see through the, the, the sound bites. You have to see through the propaganda. All right. I'm going to wrap this one up here. I want to thank you for listening. I want to encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell all your friends. I'll talk to you next time.